Hi, my name is Rajesh Kaswani and I'm an Associate Professor of Medicine at Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine in Chicago, Illinois. I want to thank gastrointestinal endoscopy on behalf of my co-authors for the opportunity to discuss our article, Adverse Events After Surgery for Benign Colon Polyps Are Common and Associated with Increased Length of Stay and Costs. So the genesis of this article was that our group is very interested in value-based care and shared decision-making. As the readership well knows, there are several ways to manage uh, colon polyps the two primarily being endoscopic resection and surgery. For most polyps we encounter on a daily basis, endoscopy is performed with relative ease to remove polyps. But for larger polyps, or those that may be more flat or in a difficult location, endoscopists often find themselves choosing between endoscopy or surgery for removal of the polyps. We now have very robust data to show that endoscopic resection of complex polyps, or those polyps which are more difficult to remove, is safe and effective, and we think more cost effective. Surprisingly, we have very little comparative data for how surgery performs for resection of benign colon polyps, with most of the surgical data extrapolated from the literature for surgery for inflammatory disease or malignant disease. And these uh, outcomes may not be similar to surgery for benign colon polyps. Furthermore, when we're doing cost effective analyses, we're using these imputed costs from surgery for other uh, reasons instead of using the actual surgical costs. So we had two primary aims in this study. The first aim was actually to determine what the outcomes of surgical resection for benign colon polyps are in a large cohort of patients undergoing primary surgical resection for colon polyps at our institution. The second equally important aim is to compare these surgical outcomes in a three-year cohort with endoscopic resection of large or complex polyps. We present a fair amount of surgical data in this paper, which might lead an endoscopist to think that this is not relevant to them. We disagree. We think of gastrointestinal endoscopists as the gatekeepers to colon polyps. When we encounter a polyp during a screening or surveillance colonoscopy, we must make a decision at that time whether we feel comfortable removing it, whether we want to refer it to a, another endoscopist with expertise in endoscopic resection, or we're going to refer it to uh, refer the polyp for surgical resection. Unfortunately, I don't think as endoscopists, we have all the information we need to make these uh, comparative effectiveness decisions. And so I'm hopeful that this study will provide uh, you as an endoscopist with the information you need to advise your patients. So to answer the primary aim of this study, what are the surgical outcomes uh, for after resection of a benign colon polyp? We found that approximately one sixth of patients who had surgery for benign colon polyp had an adverse event. And we defined an adverse event relatively stringently in that it either had to increase the length of stay on the initial admission or patients had to be readmitted for that adverse event within the 12 months following surgery. And as you'd expect, when an adverse event occurred, it markedly increased the costs of the surgery. And furthermore, the length of stay over the 12 month period went from about five days to 11 days. And so uh, I think it's fair to say that the uh, surgery for benign colon polyp really isn't as benign. We also looked at the risk factors associated with surgery and an adverse event. As we expected, we did note an association between increasing BMI and a higher ASA class suggestive of more medical comorbidities and the likelihood of de developing a post-operative adverse event after surgery. But we did not see a similar association between surgical type, meaning open versus laparoscopic surgery and adverse event rate, or location of surgery, such as a right hemicolectomy versus a left hemicolectomy and adverse event rate. Thus, when we're advising our patients on options, we need to consider the individual patient's uh, health in terms of their risk profile. The second major analysis we performed was comparing the endoscopic resection uh, outcomes versus surgical resection outcomes for a group of patients um, within a three-year period. As expected, the length of stay associated with primary endoscopic resection for a complex polyp was markedly shorter than that for surgical resection of a, a large polyp. Interestingly, there was a trend towards decreased adverse event rates associated with endoscopic resection versus surgical, surgical resection, although this did not meet clinical significance. However, when accounting for primary endoscopic resection treatment failures that required surgery, adverse events, or unanticipated malignancy within the polyp, the costs associated with primary endoscopic resection, uh, including all surveillance exams, 
was markedly lower than that first primary surgical resection, approximately $13,000 in costs per patient. So, if we were to extrapolate that data to the approximately 200 patients who were treated with primary endoscopic resection for a complex polyp over three years, endoscopic resection saved approximately $2.6 million in cost. This doesn't account for charges, which are the amount uh, that's billed to the payer, and the charge difference between primary endoscopic resection and surgical resection was approximately $40,000. So the question is, where do we go from here? We have excellent data showing that endoscopic resection is safe and efficacious. We know that uh, it is also more cost effective based on this and other studies. So we need to work with our uh, surgeons and other providers to, to develop treatment pathways for these complex polyps. Patients with benign colon polyps should be offered endoscopy and surgery, but they should be offered the options with all available data so they can make an informed decision. It is encouraging that in our study, we did see that surgical resection for these complex polyps did, dec did decrease over the 10 year period, suggesting that we are impacting the treatment offered to our patients to be more value based. Secondly, we must consider reimbursement issues when we're talking about resection of polyps. In a fee for service system, such as in the United States, Endoscopists should be incentivized for performing more complex procedures that are more time consuming, such as endoscopic resection of complex polyps. However, as our system moves towards bundled care, payers will be searching for opportunities to improve value in the care they deliver. We suggest that endoscopic resection rather than surgical resection for complex polyps represents one area to focus upon. Given the comparative safety and efficacy of endoscopic resection compared to primary surgical resection for complex parapolyps, and our shared desire to provide safe and efficient care, endoscopists and surgeons too should work together to develop multidisciplinary treatment pathways to manage patients with complex polyps. Thank you.